Hi, welcome to the Phys Ed Summit. Thanks for taking the time out of your weekend to tune in. My name is Glenn Young. This session is part two of an introduction to inquiry-based learning through the backward design process. Unfortunately, many teachers have lost the art or skill of creating quality questions. We're gonna focus on crafting essential questions. A little bit about myself. I'm in the Vancouver, BC area, which is on the west coast of Canada, just 90 miles north of Seattle. For the last 20 years of my career, I was the phys ed and athletics coordinator for the Surrey School District, which is the largest school district in our province of British Columbia. We have 101 elementary schools, which are K to seven, and 20 high schools, which are grade eight to 12. 75,000 students and about eight to 10,000 teachers. Prior to that, I taught for 15 years I was a teacher, a department head, athletic director, and also coached. In my spare time, I was also teaching at the, all three of our post-secondary institutions in the Vancouver area as a sessional instructor, working with um, pre-service teachers, as well as teach, practicing teachers uh, going for their graduate diploma in physical education. I also was the project manager for the Ministry of Education in uh, writing their elementary PE curriculum. I retired four years ago and have been consulting ever since, and these are just some of the clients I've had the privilege to be able to work with. But enough about myself, let's, it's about you. So let's get looking into what we're doing today. What I'm hoping that you will gain out of today's session is the following. You'll be able to identify the four question types, and you'll be able to craft hook, lead, guide, and essential questions, which are the four question types. So let's get started. Inquiry-based learning. In part one, I introduced the backward design process and different types of inquiry and a recommendation on how to start. It isn't an inquiry if students already know the answer. Too often we give children the answers to remember than problems to solve. Inquiry-based learning starts with a quality essential question from big ideas. The question is designed to extend learning beyond the subject area and the classroom. We're trying to focus on understanding, not facts or topics. So again, I covered this in part one. This is from the work of Dr. Lynn Erickson. And what this looks at, this model looks at is, traditionally, we focused on facts. We've, we've tested facts, we've taught facts, and we've quizzed kids on facts. They don't need, we don't need to do that. Kids don't need to learn facts. We wanna focus on understanding, which comes from trying to teach bigger concepts. That teaching of concepts helps develop relevancy for the students. We want it to be something that they are interested in and increase their motivation. So the four types of questions are hook, lead, guide, and essential. Now, before we go through that, here is a, uh, a Google Sheet that we've created, and Naomi's gonna put the link up in the back channel now. And so when you go into that, um, we want you to focus on, make sure that you're on the responses tab, and it should be color-coded, it's blue, you, you should see this. And at the top, you'll see the, the headers, the hook, lead, guide, and essential. So we're focusing on hook. So when we do this activity now, going to ask you, are you fit and how do you know? And you're going to click in a cell and um, in a row and type in your response just for that cell. You should see uh, someone else, if they're active in there, that cell will be highlighted. All right, so here we go. So this is the, our concept is fitness. The question is, are you fit and how do you know? So go into the, into the sheet. Type in, yeah, you think you're fit, why? No, you don't think you're fit, why? We'll start with two minutes here, here we go. So Naomi, are you fit? How do you know? <laughs> I think like the last session, I have more questions the, to figure that one out. Um, I guess my question would be, what does fit mean? You know, what's the criteria for being fit? Um, you know that um, just this past weekend, I had done hard Olympics with my siblings <laughs> and my younger sibling won uh, because he was able to get the most points in all the exercises that we did. 
Uh, so if you would look at it being like, who won all the competitions? He did. So does that mean he's more fit than the rest of us? I don't know. Um, so I guess the criteria are, are things for me um, as far as being fit or not. But so I'm just rambling. I don't know. So, so <laughs> I'd like would to you, say I am because I work out. Fit. Okay. I, I would like to say, could I be more fit? Yes. Um, I work out. I do 45 minutes of cardio every day because I'm an I indoor cycle uh, all the time. I like to teach indoor cycling as well. So my cardio aspect of it is really well. But can I do push-ups? Can I do a four-point push-up? I can do 10 of them. That's good. <laughs> so my strength isn't the best. So I think in certain areas of like my components of fitness, I am more fit than other areas of my component, different components of fitness. Whereas my strength is maybe not the strongest. And those are things I'm working on. I just bought some weights. <laughs> so, so you're, you're sounding very much like a politician. You're, yeah. you're not I'm avoiding the worse. answer. <laughs> <laughs> um, am I, okay, I am fit in certain areas than other areas. That's my answer. <laughs> Which okay. again, isn't an answer. <laughs> and it is because yeah. you've also it, tried to justify it, defend it with yes. the, how do you know. Uh, yes. And again, identifying where your strengths are and where your deficiencies are. So yeah. you, you are answering the question, but you are bringing up um, more points in terms of what you need to answer. Right. I'm excited to see what everybody's writing on the spreadsheet. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So for the people in the spreadsheet, um, I'm not as concerned about what, how you actually answered the question, are you fit or not? That's irrelevant. What is relevant is what are the types of conversations you had with yourself? Um, and again, <laughs> <My whole> spiel. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and again, if, as I do this, this session with teachers live, um, I have them partner up or go into a group and talk about it. And I, I want them to listen to the conversations that they engage in. And many times the conversations are around, well, I used to be able to fill in the blank, run, you know, jump, throw, lift, whatever and now I can't, or I'm not as active as I used to be. And so all those conversations are a comparison around a me versus me. And so what I want you to look at is what criteria did you use? And it should, when we are talking about fitness with kids uh, and we're trying to do some sort of a measurement of that, it really should be a me versus me type of a thing versus me versus a, uh, some sort of a norm. Now, Naomi also brought up uh, uh, further questions that she needed to have answered in order to be able to actually answer if she fit. And one of the things she wanted to look at was, well, okay, what is fitness? How do we define that? So this is an example of a hook activity. And so a hook question is cleverly um, sparking interest with the students you immediately draw them in because you're asking them to form some sort of an opinion and they have to be able to defend why they are, why they have that opinion. It really serves as a nice introduction to your learning experiences. Here's some examples of different hook questions for four different concepts. So if you notice the concept is nutrition, not diet. Nutrition, can I eat junk food and still be fit? should grab most students. Relationships, our best friends really forever. Leadership, who's the greatest leader? FMS, who's the ultimate athlete? So those types of questions, very open-ended, draw the student in or participant in, gets them to form an opinion right away, and then they have to justify why they selected that. Now, going into the spreadsheet, uh, going back to the Google Sheet, um, make sure now that you move to the Practice tab. So click on that. And again, it should be this gray colored background. Um, and what, what we would like you to do here is now this is your turn to practice. So you're going to look at the hook, the, the hook column. And again, the row that you occupied in the last, um, in the last sheet, occupy the same row here. And I want you to start crafting what you might think would be a good hook question. Note that in the concept column, there's a little arrow there, and I pre-populated that with some specific concepts there. You aren't uh, limited to those concepts. You can add some additional concepts. 
but I'm suggesting that you stay with that because right now I haven't done anything in, in explaining more what a concept is and I don't want to take the time to do that. There's so stick with the, the pre-populated ones as well. And then the column beside it, um, grade level, what grade levels would it be appropriate for? All right, so uh, we look forward to seeing what you're producing in the uh, spreadsheet. So your turn, select the concept from your PE or PHE curriculum, create your hook question uh, suitable for your grade level, and Naomi and myself will engage in a, in a conversation here around this. Have fun. So what concept would you pick, Naomi? Okay, so I'm looking at the spreadsheet right now and just look at the different concepts. So we've got fitness, fundamental movement skills, physical activity, games, spatial awareness, body, wellness, health, relationships, leadership. Hmm. You know what? I actually kind of like the nutrition one because that's a conversation I have a lot with friends and family. And I have a lot of friends and family that feel like they need to go on diets or they need to eat a certain way or not even go on they have to limit things within their, with what they're eating in order to feel like they're being healthy. And I feel like they have a very terrible relationship with food because they're trying to restrict things or they can't eat it. I always say eat things within moderation. So, okay. So that's, I'm thinking nutrition. <laughs> it's kind of an interest of mine that I've always had. So what would be a good hook? What age level? And then what hook question would you want to use? Let's say like, high school students, so nine and older. Okay, and then my hook, Cleverly Sparks Interest. Something about, like maybe I shouldn't have cho chosen nutrition because you've picked some of those ones already about junk food and stuff, but something around the lines of, you know, eating cake or cookies or, or things like that, you know, can I cut it out of my diet? Do I need to keep it? I'm trying to think of something that would. So, so right now you're, as you're, I love that you're talking this through um, <laughs> and, and your thought processes are like a teacher right now and okay. you need to flip <laughs> and think like a kid, like a okay. little kid. What would a little <laughs> kid want to know about nutrition? <laughs> Can I eat cake every day? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, okay. There we go. So, so something like that. Yeah. Five seconds is better. Oh, I got it. Yes. <laughs> right. So something like that. Can I eat cake every day? Or I might, you know, like, is eating cake every day okay? Right. Yeah. So, so something like that. That a question like that just draws in kids or draws yeah. in the participant, and that's what yeah. most teachers tend to do. Is yeah. they they're starting they're thinking too they're they're thinking from their perspective. And yes. you've got to flip and think from okay. the kid's perspective. When I think of my high school students too, what did they drink all the time? They were drinking all the sugary drinks, their pop or their soda or their energy drinks or Gatorade or all these different kind of sugary drinks. So I think, you know, I, I would probably for the high school level, I might even switch to something like that as far as that nutrition piece goes um, to having those conversations. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, and as you said that, I, I remember uh, seeing – uh, a picture of sugar that's in all these different drinks and just putting yes. that on and you go, Hey, you know, that's a hook activity. Just something yeah. that just gets them, Hey, draws their attention. That's interesting. Yeah. So if we go back to our, um, our concept of fitness uh, and I'll give you the leading question now. So what are the components of fitness? Another example might be what is fitness? And another example might be what is cardiovascular endurance? So if you notice these types of questions are all um, very, there's a simple, there's an answer. There, it's simple. You can find a finite answer. There's one answer to it. So that's an example of leading questions. So these leading questions are really designed to cover your content. That's, and this is where most teachers tend to push push the information in here, there's a single correct answer. Um, kids don't need us for these types of questions because they can, with mobile devices, can Google it or Bing it. Um, but what is more important here is from the first question around, are you fit and how do you know, the kids will come up with 
should generate more questions. And those are the student wonderings that they are interested in. And as the teacher, that's what we want to populate the leading questions with is those types of questions that the kids are wondering around the concept. So uh, um, examples of leading questions, again, nutrition, what are food groups, but it could also be, you know, what's a diet, what are calories, um, relationships, what are feelings, what are emotions, uh, leadership, okay, what is leadership? How do we define that? What is a leader? Uh, is leadership, is leading the same as managing? Uh, fundamental movement skills, what are fundamental movement skills? You know, what are the, what's a locomotor? skill what's a stabilizing skill etc right so all of those are around content and so your content is covered here the challenge that has happens in traditional curricula or traditional teaching is that the teachers populating all of this assuming that the kids are interested in learning it and that's where we lose the kids so when the kids populate it with their wonderings now they are motivated and engaged to learn because they are genuinely interested. They don't know. So again, over to you. Um, go back to the spreadsheet and use the same concept that you were using. And now I want you to create some leading questions suitable for the grade level that you were working with. All right. And again, Naomi and myself will chat through this. Here we go. Okay. So you pick nutrition. I pick nutrition and I want to focus on like energy drinks. <laughs> I changed my mind from cake. Okay. <laughs> I, although I do like cake. <laughs> okay. So well, I guess. Energy with, drinks is really good because that's yeah. something the kids engage in all the time. Yes. And consume. Yeah. So as far as the lead question goes, right? Because that's what we're looking at. Mm -hmm. So these points to single correct answers. So maybe could it be questions like what, what is an energy What's in an energy drink? Like mm -hmm. how much sugar is in an energy mm -hmm. drink? Um, I don't know if different, I don't think different brands of energy drinks would be something that they would need. To, well, see, so your hook question for this, if you're focusing on energy drinks, mm -hmm. your hook question would be, are, are energy, energy drinks are really popular. Are they good for you? Yes. Okay. I like that. And then my lead one leads to all those other kind of questions. So what's in it? How much sugar is in it? Right? Yeah. So and is, is it good for you? Maybe what about questions that would, do you just want one question or do you want a couple of questions? No, you, you, want, to, you want to generate as many as you, as you want um, so that the students get to understand, uh, they learn about energy drinks. Okay. Yeah. So like, what is an energy, you know, what is an energy, energy drink? What classifies a drink as an energy drink? What's in it? How much sugar is in it? What's energy? Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. What's energy. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and again, this is hard because it's just the two of us, but um, yeah. when you brainstorm, when you do, when you facilitate this with a class, the kids come up with way more, um, way more questions because again, you're, we're thinking like adults. Yes, and, <laughs> and they're to, interested in this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, again, with these lead questions, you're this is where you you can populate it with some of your content. But again, teachers, we make the assumption that all kids are interested or already or don't know it, and there may be some kids who already have this content or understand or know this stuff, and we're still feeding it to them, and so they get bored. Um, so this is where students generate what they are interested in learning, and that's what increases motivation and engagement in the whole inquiry um, learning process. Okay, so let's continue. So now we're looking again with our concept of fitness, and we're looking at guiding questions. So guiding questions, the guiding question that I have for you with fitness is, why do people struggle staying fit? And so, Oops, sorry, my bad. So now you're going to go back to the response um, Google Sheet and type in your responses there. Why do, you um, why do you think people actually struggle staying fit? So Naomi, let's take a couple seconds here to chat about this. Okay. There's a lot of reasons why people struggle staying fit. Um, 
okay, it comes from all different areas. Uh, so first of all, lack of motivation could be one. Um, maybe um, having a bad experience with it growing up uh, with fitness of some sort that's caused a little bit of trauma or scarring to it that if they've tried to do it, if they've struggled with weight and the, the society's perception of how you look um, can be a really negative effect to staying fit and a lack of motivation for some people. Um, it, it, a lot of it too is the um, fitness industry selling, selling a myth yes. that you need to exercise to, um, to be fit and to, to look a certain way. Right. You need to have a six pack, which means you're fit. No, <laughs> right. I know a lot of people who don't have six packs that are very, very fit. <laughs> right. Yeah. Body image. Yeah. I think body image is definitely a big piece that goes with that. Now, what, um, what other questions does this question prompt? What, what else do you have to unpack with this question? Well, I think with this one, I mean, I guess, you know, when I talk, you know, what, what types of, you know, what type of fitness are people trying to do that they can't accomplish? Or, you know, I just think of like the individual person and like things that they've tried to do that haven't worked out for them. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything right. There, there's a lot, right? The motivation seems to be the, the key thing. Um, like lots of people fail, mm -hmm. even though they set a goal. Yeah, yeah. Right. right. So there, there's lots of there's lots of different avenues that, mm -hmm. when a student was trying to answer this, they could go down, yes. rather than the teacher kind of directing or prescribing. Okay, let's look at let's focus on motivation. Well, they're they're not motivated. So, right. So the teacher, this type of a question allows the student to go and explore more. Yeah rather than just um, the teacher directing the student, okay, go down the motivation road, go down the goal setting road, go down yeah. whatever. Yeah. I mean, you go down the motivation road and, you know, you look at, well, what motivates a person? <laughs> exactly. You know, like you can go into so many different things that then cause those questions to come up. Yeah. So guiding questions, um, they, you can't recall the information. So again, you can't just go and Google that information. Uh, you can Google will help because it's going to help you research um, information, get more information, but you can't just recall it. There's no single correct answer. So it does require inference. It requires a lot of critical thinking and analysis. So again, we're moving higher in Bloom's taxonomy for thinking. So some examples of guiding questions in nutrition. There's lots of talk around a balanced diet. And again, lots of debate around a balanced diet. Well, what is a balanced diet? Because you see so many different um, books around all the different keto, paleo, right? All vegetarian, so many different types of the Beverly Hills diet for those old enough to remember that, um, right? So there's, there's lots of different opinions and how do you go and sift through all of that? Um, relationships, why does the way I, if I feel affect others? leadership how does one person make a difference uh you know in the, in the u.s right now you know, arguably the the leader of the u.s right now is making a difference it doesn't necessarily mean it's a positive difference or a negative difference they're just making a difference they're they're making an impact so how does one person make a difference what what is you know what is a, a leader doing to impact people um, fundamental movement skills. How do I get better? That I think would be a question kids might be interested in, in unpacking a little more. So with your guiding question, what you're, what, what you're trying to think of is with your hook question, it's sort of like a kind of medium big, then your leading questions get small, very, cause they're, they're very precise. And then your guiding question starts to get bigger and then when you get to your essential question, it's really, really big. So that's sort of how you want to think of moving across that grid. So again, if we go back, a chance for you to practice now. So go back to make sure you're changing your tabs to the um, practice tab. 
and go in there and try and see if you can create some guiding questions. Now, as you're doing that, when I do this workshop, and this is usually a half day workshop with teachers, but when I'm doing this workshop with teachers, by this point in time, they're complaining that their brains hurt because they're, they're, you're using brain power to try to think and you're not used to thinking this way. So it's natural for you to struggle with this. Um, that's actually a good sign. And as you're putting those in, we'll try to give you feedback in the back channel as well. So here you go. And the two minutes is just a taste of an intro to do this. Again, when I do this live, we spend about 10, 15 minutes, even 20 minutes trying to go through uh, crafting these questions. So Naomi, let's see what we come up with for guiding question. <laughs> yeah, and I'm struggling uh, right live for everybody on here too, so you're all welcome. <laughs> I've not <laughs> thought of these things ahead of time. <laughs> I should have. I knew what was coming. <laughs> okay, so as you're kind of talking about the guiding question, you know, requires inference, not recall. I kind of wanted, was thinking about, you know, energy drinks. Why do some kids take energy drinks? Or, but I guess my thinking was kind of going around, you know, fueling my body for movement, you know, putting the right stuff into my body to make sure that my output is what I want out of it. So that's kind of where my mind was thinking. I don't have a question exactly yet. Um, so can I, can I suggest why you might be struggling with that? Okay. Is that, um, if your concept is nutrition, you're focusing on energy drinks. Uh, the energy, energy drink works really well as the hook to get them in. Mm -hmm. But then when you stay on en energy, drink, energy drinks across that thread, it's yeah. too narrow. Okay, so I need to go broad. Okay. Right. So the ener energy drinks opens the door into a bigger conversation around nutrition. Um, you could start getting into healthy choices. Mm -hmm. um, Right. So there's a lot What you open the door and you want to decide how much you want to bite off. Okay. 30 seconds. <laughs> think hard. I'll think. <laughs> <laughs> right. I mean, you can even play with the one that I had there. What's a balanced diet. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, is, is staying along the lines of like drinking something still too narrow? You know, like. Yeah. Okay. So sticking more to that nutrition concept rather than. Because that's the concept, right? It. Okay. Yeah. Okay. See, so that's why this is, this is the, the challenge. This is the challenge for teachers in that you're thinking, yeah, you get the, you, you have the concept but then you're really laser focused on one item and that item isn't big enough for you to have a larger conversation around your concept. Right. So with your hook and your lead, it's really kind of more specific to that age level and what you're focusing on to really, like you said, hook them in, get them in, guide them. I mean, I know the guiding question is guiding them, but leading them to your guiding question. And then you hit them with that kind of guiding question. That's more broad to really get them pulling them in now to the concept of what you're trying to, accomplish teaching them right Am I, right. I? okay <laughs> right so um these guiding questions yeah so the guiding question again gets a little bit bigger and then the big thing is the essential question and again what i've really tried to focus on uh, when I looked at essential, why I've, done, I've sort of created this, this uh, session and this workshop for my teachers, um, when I initially Googled essential questions in PE, uh, what I found was just uh, atrocious. They, they weren't essential questions. And a lot of districts were trying to incorporate the backward design in their, in their curriculum planning um, probably eight, 10 years, no, more than 10 years ago now. Um, about 10, 12 years ago. So people, you could see districts that really understood what backward design was and how to, uh, um, how to craft an essential question. And you could see districts who they're, they're just going through the process because they have to fill in a template and they just populate it with an essential question, which, which with, with a question, which was not essential. So the essential question that I have for the concept, uh, so if we go back across what we've done so far, the hook question was, are you fit? How do you know? 
the lead questions could be anything around defining fitness or you know what strength is what's what cardiovascular endurance etc um, our guiding question was then why do people struggle being staying fit and then our essential question is is being fit the most important thing to being healthy so we know that health has many dimensions and the physical being just one of them so this question is asking students to look at all the dimensions that are involved in being healthy um, and is being fit the most important one to that so go into the uh, google spreadsheet now go back to the responses page and start typing in your responses there so naomi get your thoughts on this one Sorry, the UPS driver was just there, so I'm making sure they don't ring the doorbell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, we're good. Okay. All right, they're gone. <laughs> um, no, so you want my personal opinion on this? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, is being fit the most important thing to being healthy? Honestly, I would say no. I think your diet and nutrition is probably one of the most important things. Um, I think being physically active is probably one of the most important things, but sometimes I think the word fit as such, maybe it's a negative standpoint that people are just like, I can't do that, so I'm not going to. I'm not even going to try to do it. So I think being physically active and, and eating a, you know, healthy food, you know, junk food and stuff within moderation, if you can, um, is probably the best thing to being healthy. But I don't know if being fit is the most important thing. That's my personal opinion. What, uh, what, <laughs> what information, what additional questions come up from this question? What do you need to know to be able to answer that? Well, what does healthy mean? What, what, what consists of healthy? You know, okay. is it so nutrition? Is, is it physical activity? Is it fitness? What, what okay. is healthy? Yeah. So, so just those mm -hmm. terms that you used would be leading questions. Oh, that's okay. some of the content, <laughs> right? Because that's, yeah. that's what you'd have. Again, when you have the facilitate the discussion with the students, those topics come up we have to explore that we have to find out right so the whole idea behind this inquiry is you're as a teacher you're facilitating this you're not again as i said earlier we don't want to give the kids the problems to the answers right <laughs> or the answers to the problem yes yes <laughs> and i was like wait yet yeah, what <laughs> so what yeah. else would you have to unpack well again the being fit part um if you haven't unpacked that already what does being fit mean what does it consist of um, so we have to know what healthy is, what, what that yep. means. We have to explore all the dimensions that are involved with being healthy or health. Yep. yep. Um, right. So that's what they'd have to, to be able to unpack. So yep. an essential question is really at the heart of your learning area. Um, it's designed to promote an inquiry and further discovery of the subject. So these are examples of essential questions and really the one that's there for nutrition, I think is absolutely one of the best ones I've seen around. What should we eat? Um, because it, it is at the heart of the learning area because nutrition is a key concept within physical and health education. Um, it does extend beyond the classroom, beyond the subject area, uh, because it's relevant to uh, a five-year-old as it is to a 95-year-old. What, what we eat at any age is important to us or should be important to us. Um, and then other questions there would be, have smartphones destroyed a generation? Are great leaders born or made? Can anyone be an athlete. And so as you start to try to craft these essential questions, um, what, what you find is, for example, the have smartphones destroyed a generation? For me, that can also be a really good hook question. Yeah. So you will find that as, as you create those questions, um, you'll, you'll flip flop and struggle. So just let, let, let me give you a little more about essential questions and I'm gonna have you go and try some more. So an, an essential questions really address a concept or even a, an issue, think of it as an issue. There's no obvious right or wrong answer. 
It's highly debatable. It's framed to generate um, student interest. So you're tying in the aspects of, the, of a hook piece to it as well. It definitely has to raise more questions. Um, it, if it doesn't raise more questions, it's not an essential question. Does your question stimulate critical thinking? Does it make the students think about it all the time? And believe me, when you give these questions to the students and they actually go and work on this, they are thinking about it all the time. That's the feedback I've gotten from them. Geez, I was thinking about that all night about this, what else, you know? So that's, that's what we want, right? We're getting the students to ex extend their learning beyond the phys ed, the subject area. And again, it's timeless. So there are a lot of boxes to tick for an essential question. So use this as a checklist, Google some es essential questions, create your own and see if you tick all the boxes here. Um, so from the same concept that you're using, now go back to the spreadsheet, click on the practice tab, go back to your row and try to see if you can populate with essential questions. And again, feel free to shift your, you might think, oh, my hook question should really be essential or my guiding. So your questions will move around. And so, and that's okay because this is what I created uh, when I was in my last couple of years working with my school district to help with my teachers create these types of questions. And that chart that you see there, that table represents about 60 hours of thinking. And the struggles that I went with um, of something being an essential question, oh no, that's not a good essential, it makes a better hook. So I flip flopped back and forth between them. So um, it's okay to struggle with that. So we're going to um, experience uh, Naomi and my struggles here for the next say, struggle bus. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here we struggle's go. real. <laughs> Should have worn my shirt. The struggle is real. <laughs> Dang it. Missed opportunity. <laughs> All right. Okay, so as you were talking, I was thinking about what my question was going to be so I could be prepared to talk to everybody about this one. And I don't know if it's appropriate, but I'm going to say it and then we'll go from there. Yeah, that's the whole idea. So I basically kind of took the same thing about what you had um, when you previously shown, had shown them like, what, what should we eat, I think was the one that you had. Mm -hmm. And mine basically was because I was talking about energy drinks, I was thinking more like, what should we drink? And then I added on, what should we drink to fuel our body? But I don't know if that's too specific. Or if that sparks debate or whatnot. So I don't even know if it's a good one, but that's what I was thinking of. <laughs> okay, so what should, we, what, what should we drink to fuel our body? Mm -hmm. um, if we look at that, um, let's, oh, I don't know if I'll lose a timer. I was going to go back to the, the check yeah. boxes on the essential questions. Um, okay, so first off, is that going to be interesting to kids? I, to your athletes, maybe, <laughs> mm -hmm. about feeling the body. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So maybe what's more student-friendly language, I guess, is maybe what you're getting at. Yeah, what's, so it's got to resonate for the majority of your kids, mm -hmm. right? It's got to resonate for them. So if you think that's only going to cater to one segment of your population, mm -hmm. then you're going to change the flavor of your, <laughs> pardon the pun, change the, the nature <laughs> of, your, uh, of your question. Right. So maybe we're just simplifying it to what should we drink? Maybe I'm taking a page out of the what should we eat. I don't know if that's too, if it's not enough. Yeah, no, I, yeah, what should we drink I think could work, uh, will work so as it well. It doesn't necessarily just work with feeling the body, but just what should we drink in general? You yeah. can talk about alcohol, you can talk about water, you can talk about milk, chocolate milk, Gatorade, energy drinks. Yeah, it's yeah. more broad. It's, it's much more broader. Um, and I think that the students, again, can pick, uh, pick an avenue or a route that they want to try mm -hmm. to drive down with yeah. that. Rather than me um, driving them. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, again, this is really, uh, this is the, the paradigm shift for teachers is that you need in, when you're designing this, you need to think like a kid. <laughs> and you've got to allow the students to go down 
uh, places that you may not have thought of. Yeah. And that's the beauty of the inquiry design. Um, and that's also the fear that teachers have is that, oh, I don't have control of where kids are going to go. Right. So that's why back in part one where, where I talked about the different types of in, uh, inquiries that you can have, that's more of a free inquiry, the deep end of the pool for those right. that watched. Um, you're jumping in at the deep end, which if you don't know how to swim or you can't float or you don't have a PFD, you're going <laughs> to drown. And that's what happens with Plain a lot. Simple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you've got to start at the shallow end, work from there, and then work your way up to the deep end of the pool. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So as I said, so here's here's the chart, and I'm sure now a lot of you are going to start taking uh, taking screenshots of this, um, and that's totally fine. Um, I don't mind sharing it out, but I the caveat that I give to teachers for me not wanting to share it out is that this represented about 60 hours of thinking. And so by you just getting this and, and using this, you don't go through that process. And that's the process that I want you to go through. That struggling that you're going through right now, the struggling that you're, um, that you're witnessing with Naomi and we're talking this through, that's the, that's the struggle that I want you to go through in, in order to be able to, know how to craft these types of questions um, that are going to work for the kids. And if you notice the essential questions that I have there, um, they're not sounding like a, a doctoral thesis question. To what extent should the relationship of how what we eat impact human growth? And develop? like, Kids don't care about that. They cannot articulate that question. You ask the kids, hey, the question we want to look at is what should we eat? they can articulate that, that resonates with them. Hey, can anybody be an athlete, right? Does practice make perfect? Are there, for little kids, are there really, are, are there real life superheroes? They can relate to those types of questions. So again, with your questioning, think like a kid, not like a teacher. So the other question that I get a lot from teachers is, well, why do I need to use essential questions? And so if you don't want kids to discover patterns, you don't want kids to learn how to problem solve, then don't use essential questions. If you don't want kids to have more motivation to learn, not being compliant to learn, their motivation doesn't come from compliancy where you're dangling a mark or a carrot in front of them, where they genuinely want to learn because they are really engaged and interested then don't use essential questions. It's really a great tool, again, to have kids or participants, individuals, think at a more complex level. So we don't want, we can start with, um, you know, hey, what's fitness? How do we define fitness? But that's not going to get them to more complex levels and deeper thinking, especially critical thinking. Every teacher wants to engage their students. The way we're doing it right now, uh, when you look at your class, you look at those, those little faces in front of you, um, some, many of them are not engaged because they're bored. They're not interested in what teachers are teaching and what, we, and what we're trying to teach them is not necessarily what they want to learn. So we've got to be careful with that. Um, and students really want to, we want to send them on a search, a, a thirst for additional knowledge. So that's the whole idea behind inquiry and crafting good essential questions. So, Naomi, here's the test. Can you identify the four question types? I probably shouldn't have the uh, document open up in front of me. <laughs> Even better. Yes, I can. can. Yes, I can. Hook, good. lead, guide, essential questions. Awesome. Yay. Yes. <laughs> and again, I I would I'm hesitant that you would be able to craft those four questions types of questions from 45 minutes with me but certainly it's an introduction and giving you a chance to try to practice doing that even just talking through it with you is beneficial I mean I'm sure everybody's jealous of my time with you right now <laughs> <laughs> and on that note we do get more time after this yes, in our go. breakout session so yes. here's my contact info um, Thank you so much for tuning in 
uh, today. We look forward to interacting with you in the back channel. Yep, and we can also set up some breakout sessions here too. And in the back channel, we'll kind of type out how that's going to work and we'll allow you to kind of create your own ones. But if you want to get into like some groups of 10 to be able to craft some ideas and have some conversations, we can make that happen. But yeah, we'll have a conversation about that in the chat with you all. Super. Awesome. Thanks, Glenn. Right. Thanks, everyone. And I'm going to stop here.